In one of the sessions on the previous day, Professor Samir Brahmachari elucidated on the future direction of scientific and industrial research and research institutions in the country. This is not a paper. You write in a paper and you keep it for 100 years, it becomes brown and broken. But this will stay for 1,000 years. And that's innovation. It's a novel, tamper-proof, tear-proof, durable leather as printing paper for niche application. So we want to create a Dalil, a very special. Now this has been invented by K. Muhammad Fakuruddin with the financial support under the TEP program of DSIR, sitting in Chennai, in a DBT, a DST supported incubation center at Madras University. So what is private public partnership means? And this is the new model of private public partnership. There was a time when government worried about it. So what did government do? Government created an institution now, where did this man got trained? He got trained in one of the leather institute, leather technology, again created by some government institution. CSR is the founder of the Central Leather Research Institute. That spun off other institutions, where you spin off people. So the government's role, public funding's role is creating people. New model. Public funding's role is to create incubator. The third day of Indian Science Congress began with the Space Summit. Dr. R. Naval Gun was in chair. Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, particular session on Space Summit. The Space Summit session has been a regular feature of the Science Congress since many years, and it wants to bring about the innovations, the exploration activities, and many other new developments that happen in the area of space, and in particular in India, are being brought out as part of this particular Space Summit. Professor V. Adimurthy spoke about the developments in Indian space program during the last four decades. Listing the new space challenges, he said, low-cost access to space, reaching interplanetary space for scientific exploration, resource utilization, exploring space for human habitat, and also defending planet Earth from the disaster are the top priorities. At this moment, the spacefaring world is looking towards new frontiers of space science and technology. And the main parameters of these new challenges are low cost access to space, reaching interplanetary space for scientific exploration, resource utilization, and uh, human habitat, and also for possibly for defending the planet Earth from the disaster of any possible major impact of uh, near Earth asteroids. These are the challenges uh, that lay ahead of us. Dr. S. V. Kaib spoke about the satellite navigation system. He said that in the next 10 years, the number of navigation satellites is expected to be around 100. What is required is that you need at least a minimum of four satellites to get the ranges from the satellite through one-way transmission. There is no two-way transmission. Your receiver does not transmit to the satellite. It only receives. And it receives the signals from four satellites, calculates the range, and inverts the position, and calculates x, y, z, and t. t is the time. x, y, z is the position of the person who is holding the receiver. So what do you have in the world today? You have uh, the US GPS. You have the Russian GLONASS system. And the Europeans are also building a system called Galileo. And as you can see, 
the left hand side picture, the GPS satellites, they are like covering the globe. They are like an envelope on the globe. Dr. T.K. Alex talked about small satellite systems. More than 1,000 small satellites weighing less than 100 kg have been launched worldwide. If you look at the comparison of satellite size, as I told, a very large communication satellite, it could be weighing almost 6,000 kilograms, and end to end it could be as big as 30 to 40 meter size. On the other hand, a small satellite called nano satellite could be weighing two or one kilogram, and uh, the size could be as much as uh, 10 centimeters or even smaller. He also said the Chandrayaan 1 of ISRO and a Smart 1 of European Space Application were the lowest costing missions to Moon. Professor P. Dayanandan in his presentation emphasized that space biology has potential applications and therefore various ministries of Government of India can help initiate an Indian space biology program. Gravitational biology deals with how living organisms respond to gravity to which we are stuck at the moment on Earth. And if you go out into the space and try to get away from gravity, what happens to you, to your physiology and to you and the kind of medical treatment that you may need? And finally, this field also deals with astrobiology of identifying if there is life elsewhere and why and how did it evolve. Another plenary session addressed the critical and challenging scientific issues of climate change under the chairmanship of Dr. Shailesh Nayak. I now request Dr. Nayak to chair this session. I would like to convey a very good morning to all of you and very happy new year. As we know that the earth has been very dynamic and undergone variety of changes throughout its life. That means the last 4.8 billion years. But the last 10,000 years were a little bit more stable. But we would like to answer that how this Earth system is going to respond to this anthropogenic as well as the natural changes. Professor B. N. Goswami spoke about Indian monsoons in a changing climate. He said that 2009 was the warmest year in the past 100 years. He said that these changes have profound impact on central Indian monsoon domain. Today, so I'm going to talk about what we know about the monsoon that are linked and what we don't know about monsoon which cannot be linked with the climate change. Dr. S. W. A. Nakwi presented his work on role of Indian Ocean biochemistry. The oceans play a key role in regulating climate. And also the role of uh, the climate change on the ocean biogeochemistry itself, uh, particularly in our region, the Indian Ocean region. Our uh, atmosphere is unique in the entire uh, universe that we know of. Uh, I have here a slide that compares the chemical composition of Earth's atmosphere with the atmospheres of our two neighboring planets, that's Venus and Mars. Why is this, this remarkable difference between the chemical compositions of these three planets? Now you might say that it's because of the biology, because Earth has life, whereas the other two planets don't. And that would be correct, but only partly so. Dr. Anil V. Kulkarni in his presentation pointed out that the Himalayan range has one of the largest concentration of glaciers in the world. However, this source of water ought not to be considered permanent. As geological history of Earth suggests, constant changes have happened in glacial extent due to climate changes. Uh, what I'm going to talk today is about the glaciers and climate change. Uh, glaciers has uh, last few years fair share of its headlines and a uh, lot of controversies associated with that. 
uh, going beyond the headlines and controversies, it is, I thought this is appropriate place for us to know, understand what we really know about the Himalayan glaciers. Uh, we already know that large number of Himalayan glaciers are retreating and some of them are retreating very fast rate. Professor A.K. Gosain spoke on the issue of water and its sustainability. He said, fresh water is a renewable but finite resource. Therefore, human activity should not become a danger to it. Any imbalance in water cycle could cause serious danger to human race. In our country, around 85% of the water is being used for the, the agriculture sector. We have been going in for the medium and minor schemes and of late the watershed development has become a very important program which is again across the country in different systems in different ways is being implemented. This care team also talked to a number of scientists who had participated in Indian Science Congress in various capacities. What kind of changes it has taken place over here? Yeah. Yes, it is a fact that uh, I haven't been associated with the Science Congress for the last say about 40 years as an ordinary member, a student member and then subsequently uh, becoming a uh, recorder of the section of animal veterinary and fishery sciences and then sectional president subsequently served say the, as executive. Uh, and then council and now as a general president of the Indian Science Congress Association. So what I feel that uh, say, uh, during about 30 years I, I should say a lot of changes has taken place. Earlier the Congress was though it was held say in say the various parts of the country but say the number of the participants it was not so high. This time, what I have come to know that uh, more than say 8,000 members, they have been say enrolled over here. I think it's a very appropriate question in the present context when uh, the complexity of our systems is increasing. We need to take the help of the science to come up with solutions which are appropriate and meaningful for the society. The Science Congress gathering has been always a wonderful experience for the Indian scientists since this is the only event which covers the entire spectrum of science in India, right from biology to communication and information technology. Unless people uh, uh, do PhDs and MTechs in these advanced uh, disciplines, we will not have trained manpower to address the issues related to water security, food security and uh, uh, addressing the uh, the, the impacts of climate change. Uh, my scientific work is in uh, clinical and uh, epidemiologic thyroid research. Uh, I'm an endocrinologist in Boston. Uh, I came because uh, Professor Amar K. Chandra uh, is a colleague of mine. We've been collaborating over a long distance and he invited me to come here. We had a chance to meet and to share some science. Um, it's, it is, you're right, it's very different from any uh, conference I've been to in America or Europe because we don't have the same kind of heterogeneous uh, crowd. I've never been certainly to a, a conference in America where we had the sign of sort of polit political dignitaries um, who were here at the inauguration. Mm -hmm.